Good evening, gearheads. Welcome to Frozen Speed City on Sunday night. This is John Massengale, and I am zooming in from home. I decided that I could not drive on ice in Austin, Texas, and I stayed at home. Pants, take off the bra and be a man! <laughs> yeah. uh, it is, Austin is a complete sheet of ice, as probably many of you are experiencing right now. It is crazy, but we have a great show for you tonight, and thanks for all of you who were watching the Daytona 500, and are tuning in because of the rain delay and uh but this is john maskell i have les kaiser and jonathan green with me via zoom how are you boys cold hey doing all right doing all right went outside check it around act silly like all the neighbors like we've never seen this before but absolutely we have not seen it to this this degree and and uh of frigidness yeah. Be I haven't been out in six months. What's it like outside? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like a double lockdown with the COVID and now the freeze. It's nuts, man. This is this is uh this is out of control. But hey guys, we have a great show. I want to tell you what we got going on because we're gonna continue with our Haas F1 exclusive interviews. We had Kevin Magnuson a few weeks ago, then we had Roman Grosjean. Well, this week we've got an exclusive with Gunther Steiner because our man, Dave O'Neill, had a trip to, to uh, North Carolina planned, and he went out no, there. No, and no, no, no. And he we caught up with him. Gunther. We flew him to North Carolina specifically to meet Gunther. Is that the, is that the story we're going to go yeah. with? Yeah. Okay. But but Dave O'Neill, who, of course, was Gunther's team manager and uh, for several years at Haas F1, you know, he's been on our, our national broadcast of the pre- and pre- post-race shows, he got to sit down with Gunther for a few minutes out there in North Carolina. So we've got that interview coming up here in just a few minutes. And we also have a young F4 driver from Texas. We got Jake Bonilla coming on the show. And uh, Jake's going to talk about his ride through. I love it that we got a guy from right down the road in San Antonio, a young man that's fighting his way up through the formula ladder with the USF4 series. And then at the end of the show, the last segment of the show, we have a really interesting guy. We have Santiago Calderon. And Santiago is a an athlete, coach, and psychologist, not, not psychologist, but a uh, he's basically a mentor and trainer for everything from mental fitness to physical fitness. And, and he works with drivers and all sorts of different athletes. And so that's going to be a really fascinating discussion. We got that at the end of the show. But we're going to start with, I want to start with the Daytona 500 stories, because there are some, even though we've only had 15 laps and a giant crash. Because we have the debut of Michael Jordan's team. I know you and I, Jonathan, are really excited about that. And then, of course, I do want to touch on the 20th anniversary of Dale Sr.'s passing uh, at the Daytona 500 20 years ago. But but let's start with this this uh, Michael Jordan story, Jonathan. I'm really excited about this. Yeah, I am. Uh, and I think it is a game changer for NASCAR. Um, NASCAR, it's interesting. You know, I've been I've been watching it all afternoon. And, of course, they've got nothing to run. And I that, those are the best times to tune in because you can learn more about the sport when they're, when they're not racing uh, because they have to do interviews and they have to show stuff. So I was watching how they made Days of Thunder and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I really do think that, you know, the days of Earnhardt and, and the classic Mark Martin battles are gone. Um, and Frank, Frankie, frankly, I think this is a new era for NASCAR and the way they stepped out of the pandemic – uh, last year, and we're able to go first. Then the Black Lives Matter and Jordan picking it up, I think is huge. And and not because of that, actually. I mean, I'm delighted that there, that there is a, a potential real diversity program now in NASCAR. We're doing the same in Trans Am, uh, and it's happening in Indy too. Great. All good stuff. But I think the the, the, the sight of having Michael Jordan, the one of the world's most renowned athletes, and friend almost of any athlete and fan fan from China to, you know, Zimbabwe, he is known. And that just changes the game uh, as he is a team owner. And, in, and it goes from being a white Southern sport to being a mainstream, you know, I can see the 23 shirts being everywhere. And I don't think it's going to be something that will be culturally just a black, you know, a black following. I think it's going to be a huge, I mean, I, I was already thinking, Oh, I wonder if there's any merchandise yet, you know, cause that, I mean, we all, I've still got my 23, um, you know, uh, shirt, 
from from his days. You know, that yeah. was a pride and joy thing. And I don't even play basketball. I don't think I've ever worn it. Yeah. You know, the singlet, <laughs> the and Chicago you know, this, Bulls singlet. There's a lot of facets to this story. Of course, Bubba Wallace, who you haven't even mentioned. Yeah. Is, the, I haven't, no. <laughs> I mean, that's really just as much of, of the story. It's so fantastic. And, of course, Hamlin, who's not only a part owner, but also a, a driver for another team. So it's really fascinating. But well, can I can I make the other one point? I, I want Les to get in on this, but I just want to say you mentioned Hamlin, and that was the other thing I was going to say. Um, it was that... Uh, Hamlet, the, 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 the setup is brilliant. Bubba's not one, but he has all the potential. And Michael Jordan said that's why they got him. Hamlin is a, I mean, he was going for three in a row. So you're literally taking, you know, you, you are taking a Brady and putting him in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win the Super Bowl. And Jordan's doing the same. He's taking the top driver and then Bubba with the most potential. I mean, Bubba was second here a couple of years ago, I think at the 500, but he's been there or thereabouts. And, and I've been watching him particularly last year because of what was going on. And, you know, he is top 10 all the time. He's just not had the winning that Hamlin's had. So now that combination could be electric. You know, I, I see some similarities of things. Uh, Harking back to our buddy, Willie T. Ribs, when yep. Muhammad Ali, the name everybody in the world knew, got behind Willie mm -hmm. and got him in an Indy car. And so I think this, uh, this is a good parallel of, again, kind of breaking the mold of what's expected in NASCAR right now. As you said, white Southern guys with a cold, cheap beer. And, <laughs> and now we've got Jordan coming into play. I mean, one of the most iconic brands about an individual there is. And uh, I, I hope it brings that culture in with it and the audience that already follows Jordan. I, I, I love that this is happening right now. You know, yeah, I do too. I, I, there's not a bigger, in our generation, there's not a bigger superstar than Michael Jordan. I mean, as we saw that that series that ESPN put out during the pandemic was like the highest rated show, but there's no, there's no bigger athlete superstar in our generation. And I'm not even sure, it, you know, if there's somebody that's bigger now. So, I mean, Tiger Woods approached it, LeBron James, probably, you know, Tom Brady, maybe, and some other NFLs, but, but Michael Jordan was just the biggest name ever. And I, I'm just really excited about it, but well, guys, Hey, I want to, we, before we go to our first break, I want to play the first segment of our interview with Gunther Steiner. And this interview was just set up real quick. It was Dave O'Neill, who used to be the team manager for Haas F1, who now works with us. He caught up with him out in North Carolina, out in, uh, in the factory. So let's hear this from uh, Dave O'Neill and Gunther Steiner. Strange morning, really. Got on a plane um, heading to North Carolina and um, thought I'd give me our mate Gunther a call or a text actually. So I text him and um, came over here and did a bit of social distancing, caught up on the uh, caught up on the past, present and future. But um, thought we'd put it down in um, in a bit of audio just to just for a bit of content for the uh, for the radio. So a couple of the questions um, be interesting for uh, for the twenty twenty one season is um, how are the drivers shaping up for um, for the upcoming season? and the testing. Um, are you using both race drivers for testing? And um, what's, your, what's your thoughts on the season coming up? First of all, good to see you, Dave. You know, it's always good to see you wherever we meet, you know. You run into each other, we racing people, never lose, lose touch of each other, you know, when we work together. So, yeah, no, everything is coming together uh, pretty well. I mean, the drivers now are preparing. They're a little bit uh, anxious to get in a car. I mean, this is the right thing to be. If you're young, you want to drive an F1 car and you got the possibility to drive an F1 car. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, but they are, they are just training, both of them trying to get uh, uh, just uh, fit uh, for, te uh, uh, for testing. They are uh, going to make the, uh, the seats uh, in Bambury uh, this and next week. They can come in for that one. Uh, we get the uh, uh, exceptions that they, I mean, Nikita is going to quarantine before making the seat, obviously. We do all with the right procedures, but uh, everything is coming together. It's quite exciting for us. Uh, having two new drivers is something uh, we didn't have for a long time. So, uh, but uh, it, it, it isn't easy with Corona because the mechanics, they are doing shift work. So you have to just 
uh, everything is a little bit more difficult and cumbersome to get it done. Yeah, I can imagine there's a, there's um, a lot of waiting around and ticking boxes before you before you can do anything. But um, as you move into the test start of the test season, um, and also the changes that aren't very big, I can imagine from 20 to 21. What what sort of things are we looking for this year um, from 20 to 21 that are going to um, find time on the cars for the teams? Uh, the, the regulation from 20 to 21 changed a little bit. That uh, uh, there was there are modifications to actually lose downforce by regulation because the tires uh, were on their limit. Uh, so if, if you would have kept on putting downforce onto the car, there, there could have been a potential problem. So it was decided that we get rid of some downforce. But you know what you do? You try to find it again. And that's what was done uh, over last year. Obviously, uh, we started pretty late because of the pandemic. We uh, furloughed and closed down for a period of time the factory. So we started developing in November and finished in January. So uh, hopefully we found something. but. Uh, the, the cars, even because the chassis cannot change, the suspension cannot change, the gearbox is not changing, uh, uh, so, but the aerodynamics can change. So uh, I, I think uh, aesthetically, we will see the cars being different quite a bit because the engine, some of the parts change. So you need to make a new body work, as you know, Dave, you know, uh, because the radiator is going to change a little bit because the, 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 the cooling will be a little bit different. Uh, so they, they will change, but uh, what you try to lose as little downforce as possible with the, with the, uh, with the change of, uh, of regulations we have for this year. But uh, everybody is trying to do the same, but it could be that some of the cars look quite differently aesthetically because it's all dominated by the front wing uh, and the body worker car. So uh, there could be so, uh, some changes which we expect it to be less but, uh, for the aesthetics, but uh, the, the suspension and transmission and hydraulics, they will stay the same. Every team had two tokens to use, which were minor changes on the car. So we didn't use them. They could uh, change like the, you could, for example, change the front suspension, but you would not allow to change the rear one or vice versa. You know, you could use the tokens for that, but, uh, uh, but mainly the changes will be aerodynamically. Okay, understood. And then um, I guess the tyres, you know, everyone likes talking about tyres. Is there any, any change in the tyres for next year that you've had to do any planning towards um, for the for the season? Yeah, uh, the tyres change. Uh, we tested them end of the season last year in FP in two FP ones. Uh, uh, they, they, I think they changed a little bit the, the construction and a little bit the compound. But uh, uh, the drivers, uh, I mean, they tested them. But the tyre to test only in one FP one is always difficult to come to a conclusion because it. In the back of your mind, you set the car up with the tire you had before. That's your starting point. And in one free practice session or with one set of tires, you cannot make really changes. You 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 you, you check uh, uh, you run the tire with the same setup like with the call it the old tire, and then you need to work a little bit to get them to work properly. So I think that will be that will be the main testing uh, 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 thing to do uh, in Bahrain before we start for the, uh, for the uh, for racing. All right, well, we're going to hear the rest of that here in just a minute after the break. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let's take a quick break and listen to Speed City live from Austin, Texas, and we'll be back after these quick messages. Lap Battle USA is back at Circuit of the Americas March 6th and 7th. It's the ultimate time attack challenge where top drivers compete for the fastest lap times in fully tuned track built cars featuring the Grid Life Touring Cup, Lone Star Trap Ride Alongs, Food Trucks, a Just Vibes Car Show and more. Plus, the Life Motorsports Nissan GTR is back to defend its time of 207-181. It's a whole weekend of family fun. Tickets are $10 online, $20 at the box office. Find out more at SuperLapBattleUSA.com. As a rider, you know what you like. The power, the feel, the ride. When it comes to gear, you know what keeps you safe. Ducati Austin provides riders with the finest in day and easy leathers. The best the market offers. Visit Ducati Austin on Breaker Lane just east of I-35 and throw your leg over the most iconic sports bike ever built. Ducati. Even take it for a test ride or see what's been described as art on wheels from MV Augusta. You know what you like. See it at Ducati Austin. Online at DucatiAustin.com. Thank you. 
Austin's Talk, 1370. Hi, this is Mario Andretti, and this is Speed City. Welcome back to the fastest hour in radio, Speed City. I'd like to give a shout out to Fox Television because they've decided to wait till right after we go off the air to restart the Daytona 500. Perfect. Apparently. Thank you very much. Yes, I'd like to thank them. I appreciate that. Hey, um, speaking of Daytona Fox coverage, did y'all see the Jamie Chadwick commercial that they yes! played for IBM? I was going to call you about that. that. How good was that? It was awesome. I tweeted it out. I found it on YouTube and tweeted it out. It's a really great commercial. I, and I, and my she, she, yeah, she comes across good, huh? How, my tweet was, I guess they have found out what we found out, that she is a very impressive young woman. We had, we had her on, I guess, about, I guess, a year ago or so. And she right. is fantastic, man. She is really impressive. So that was a great commercial. But all right, we're going to play the second half of this interview that Dave O'Neill did with Gunther Steiner. But uh, before I, we do that, I'm just going to tell you, coming up right after that, before we go to Jake Bonilla, the race driver, we're going to talk about some of the F1 news. Obviously, we had Lewis Hamilton sign a one-year contract, and and uh, Fernando Alonso had a bike, bicycle accident. But there was also a little bit of sneaky news, if you weren't paying close attention. The F1 commission met, FIA, along with the 10 teams, and you manufacturing, and, and everybody met and talked about some really fascinating things, including the power unit and... Uh, the engine freeze, some really interesting stuff. So we're going to talk about that right after this second part of the Gunther interview. So let's go ahead and, and uh, finish up with that. Going back to Bahrain is a bit strange, I guess. I don't know if that's ever been done before. Maybe w when the Australia's happened in the 80s, maybe that's happened. But how much do you think the track will change from when you race there um, at the end of 2020? Um, and the, the weather, I guess, is pretty similar. High, 40, 40 degrees. Uh, I, I think it will be pretty similar, as you say, because uh, we, we, we went there uh, uh, just be before the end of the year and now we go back uh, five months later. So I think the temperatures be, should be very similar. I, I didn't actually check how much it will be, but uh, uh, I, I anticipate not a lot different. It's just the strange thing is we just wear there and now we go again. You know, we could have stayed there. You know, it's pretty good weather there. And uh, <laughs> uh, maybe we should have if we would have known that we go back this quick. But it uh, seems to be a little bit that uh, we are there uh, uh, quite often. So, no, but it's good from Bahrain that they host us. They're, it's a fantastic uh, uh, racetrack. You know, uh, they, they are very good people. How they manage everything. They are very uh, available for everything, you know, because with, uh, with the pandemic in the moment, it's not this easy to find uh, venues where we can do this. And then... The, uh, the, they said we can uh, put the, the, a race on in the beginning of the year because they are under control there and then it was the obvious thing to do to do the testing there as well. Uh, we, know, we, we, we didn't go to Bahrain before testing because of cost issues because you fly the cars there and then you have to fly them to Australia normally but uh, and we were going to, to do the testing in, in Barcelona but now if the first race is in Bahrain it makes sense to go there testing to two weeks not nothing probably we work there and then do the race because going to spain and then to bahrain would be costing more than going straight to bahrain and uh, uh, bahrain gave us that uh, opportunity and we took it cool and then um as a as a has supporter now um you know worked for them for a few years enjoyed the time there where um we're always we're always sort of Ch champion on hoping that um you know the the points points are going to carry on coming and the odd podium um eventually one day is where do you where do you see have, do you have any um do you have any, uh high hopes for this year or do you think it's it's just going to be um a year that you're just going to keep your head down and and push hard yeah uh, i mean it will be a head down year this year i mean with the pandemic last year uh, we stopped developing, we, we took a step back, I would say, last year, uh, from where we were before. Uh, uh, but it's a transitional year, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful and very confident that, that, that we get back in 22 strong again, because uh, we are building up more now for 22 uh, 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 than doing anything for 21. We know 21, there is one year of this regulation left. In 22 is a complete new regulation, and that is here for the mid to long term, that regulation. So where do, do, do we need to invest in the mid to long term? There's no point to invest in the short term. And that for also a decision to take two rookies. If you don't take that decision now, you will never take it because this is, will be a transitional year, as I said. It will be a head down year 
try to learn as much as you can, iron out some mistakes uh, uh, we are making, get their rookies trained so they are ready for when we hopefully are in a better position. And uh, I, I really believe on it. And uh, with the uh, budget cap regulation coming in as well, uh, this year the first time, and then continuing, it should give uh, the smaller teams a chance uh, to, to aim for the podium, which is always the aim to do. And uh, we took it uh, and said, hey, if we want to, even if we put, I think, uh, the best driver in the car this year, the results will be not fantastic. So it's the best way to invest in young drivers and, and, and try to get them ready for the future, you know, which is a good thing. And uh, uh, if you want to make a change, uh, we decided we're doing this year because doing it next year, uh, then you've got a new car, a new driver, at least you need to have some known quantities. And uh, that is what you're trying to do. And uh, as I said before, uh, our technical team was a little bit uh, uh, shaken up last year on the, uh, from the pandemic. And uh, we now set it up again uh, pretty strong. Uh, uh, we, we are working, uh, 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 we got a, a, a quite a few uh, former Ferrari guys, which uh, uh, they, they were available because uh, Ferrari had to uh, cut out some of their people because of the budget cap. They cannot afford them in the budget cap anymore, all these people. And, and, and we picked them up. So uh, I, I'm very hopeful that we can do a good job and uh, being back to our 18 form in, in, in 22. Good. Well, thank you very much for your, your time. Um, much appreciated. But um, as ever, very nice to see you in, in person and look forward to um, Formula One coming to the States. Good to see you as well, Dave. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, Dave. I like their relationship. It, it, you can tell uh, friends. that, yeah, they're friends and, and some level of respect there. But, you know, some very interesting points about that interview. Number one is Gunther. I mean, he is so open, right? He, yeah. I mean, he is uh, so different than most F1 principals. Did you also notice that he said the P word in the middle of Wait, that interview? What, what word's that? The podium word. No. He said, yeah. <laughs> he said that. And... Cats and dogs living together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Steve Martin, I got that Thank reference. Thank you. Uh, but Jonathan, what else about that interview? I, I, like you say, the openness to admit that this year will be a transition year. I mean, I, I would hark back to two major decisions Haas have made in the last um, six months. One was Gene himself committing to Formula One to the new Concord agreement for, for the next five years. And when that's done, then it really is a blank sheet of paper. And you go, OK, we're here for five years. What can we achieve in that five years? And then they took the even bolder step of saying, let's start a new era with two drivers because we've got this chance to give them a year without any expectations. And I think um, I think both drivers will actually grow in this environment. You know, we now know Dave O'Neill. We now we're getting to know Gunter. I think it's a great environment. I, you know, compared to some of the other teams uh, that you could throw yourself into, I think Haas is, is probably, you know, the friendliest atmosphere you could be in. And I think um, you've also got Fiddy Paldi waiting in the wings. Uh, I, I really do think that it that the next three years for Haas, not this year, but the next three years could be really special. And that P word, watch out for it. Uh, two years, if not three years. Uh, I would love that. You know, you just mentioned Fittipaldi. He's the other Haas F1 team member we've had on the show in the last four or five weeks. So we yeah. <laughs> had the whole team. Hey, guys, we just have a little bit left in this segment. So I want to jump to this F1 commission meeting because there's one thing that I want to get your take on, Les Kaiser. I, I, I'm going to start with this, this uh, emotive word that they used in this, um, that F1 described. They said they want... The, the powertrains moving forward to have an emotive uh, aspect to them. In other words, emotion. You know, we've all talked about, we heard that Ferrari startup this week, and I was like, meh, it just, it doesn't do anything. It's like, okay. What was that again? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a little more exciting than the startup. <laughs> yeah, it, that, they're just nothing, There's that, that's not exciting to me at all. Uh, the fact that it's, the only thing that makes it exciting means is the season's coming up. But the fact that, that there's just nothing really exciting about these power units, the sound, the, you know, nothing, you just, but they're, they're going to go back to this, going back to this, what they said, the word emotive, right? I have a particular uh, idea about this and I've said it earlier in the, in the season last year, maybe even the year before, but 
in my mind, emotive would be the sound, number one, right? We all want a much better sound. But what if we did, which would, what if we did something like went back to like, they have a 1.6 liter V6. Why not make it a 1.6 liter V12 or V8 at least, or, or, or something a little where we could get excited about the, we could get emotional about the mechanicalness of it. Because let's face it, there's nothing exciting about a V6. Absolutely nothing. I mean, I mean, if a V8, V10, V12, that would be cool. I don't know. What? A rotary? Something different, <laughs> but something well, different to get emotional about. What about you, Les? You're right. I can't say there was really a, a V6 that just wowed me. Yeah. Unless you date back to the, the Buick GNXs with, you know, the 252 Turbo that was beating up on the lowly, weak need Corvettes of the day. But yep. here we are. This is the pinnacle of the sport. And it needs to scream. It needs to rattle your chest. It needs to make you want to hold your ears. And quite honestly, I don't feel like it does any of that. And a uh, an equivalent displacement of the six cylinder and throw a turbo on it. Oh my gosh, that, the RPMs. Can we get back up to some 14,000, 18,000 yes. RPMs and give us a reason to, to react to the, the sound? I'm totally game for it. That's exactly right. Some big time RPMs with some more cylinders. Well, we, we're almost out of time, but Jonathan, real quick, can you touch on the engine freeze? Yes, um, they've decided to freeze the engines until 22. And I think that's gonna make things interesting for a couple of reasons. You've got Red Bull uh, hanging on to their Honda engine and by all reports, um, they're gonna stick with it. Honda have, have officially pulled out of the sport um, but their engine is just coming good at the perfect time for Red Bull. And potentially they could have a, a world championship winning engine this year. Um, but the freeze will be next year. So the what you're looking at is developing or getting to the point where this year's engine is good enough for the freeze. And therefore, the next question is, how good is Ferrari's engine after the disappointment of last year um, when they got into trouble with the FIA? And they were basically uh, had a draggy car, as they described it, but they couldn't put enough horsepower to make it fast. And so they had a very disappointing season. You know, the Red Bull, the fact that Red Bull is going to take the intellectual property from Honda and become an engine manufacturer is what this essentially is boiling down to. You know, th this is no small undertaking. Look at what it, look how long Honda suffered trying to get that thing right. So here you have a company that, yeah, they've been massively successful in Formula One, but they're no engineering powerhouse like Honda, a, an actual manufacturer out in the real world. I think this is a monumental task that they've taken on. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, Honda's been, I mean, Red Bull's been amazing at what they've done. So let's just see what they can do. But all right, well, guys, we got to take a break. And when we come back, we are going to have our first guest. We have Jake Bonilla, an F4 driver from here in Texas, from San Antonio. You're listening to Speed City, and we'll be back after a quick break. Winding Road Racing is your first and best choice for all the essentials for a great weekend at the track. We're racers, and we love helping racers. With a full selection of racing gear in stock, get geared up with all the safety equipment needed to meet all the latest Snell FIA and SFI regulations. Outfit your car with a comprehensive lineup of racing necessities, and when you need to find a few more tents, turn to data acquisition systems from AIM Sports, V-Box, and others. Austin-based with shops in California, Georgia, and Kentucky, the source for all your racing needs. Winding Road Racing, windingroadracing.com. When you're looking for traditional Tex-Mex, look no further than an Austin favorite, one in a million. Serving original family recipes since 1980 and located just minutes from downtown at 2300 East Caesar Chavez, one in a million has your Tex-Mex fix every day of the week from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Breakfast is served all day. Homemade migas, enchiladas, and menudo. And try the Don Juan taco. Some say it's big enough to feed a family of four. One in a million. Online at oneinamillion.com. Austin's Talk 1370. Hi, this is Jeff Gordon, and you're listening to Speed City. 
Welcome back to the fastest hour in radio, Speed City. All right, welcome back to the show. I do not want to forget to talk about the fact that we have livery releases tomorrow, guys. McLaren, starting with McLaren. So Formula yeah. One season, really, that, to me, that's when it really feels like it's about to kick off. So we got that going on. No, the racing starts when you get the next F1 superstar. And here he is. I'm going to be with him all season. And it's Jake Bonilla. And I want to thank his dad, Jorge, first of all, because he's been arranging all this for us. And it looks like Jake is sitting in his simulator. So I know he's serious. John, go ahead. Sorry, I just saw him pop up. I know. I saw you. I saw Jake pop up on the uh, on the Zoom, and I knew you were getting excited. Jake, <clears throat> wait 10 more seconds. I know you've been waiting because I want to – Give out the phone number, 512-643-LIVE, 512-643-5483. And if, thank you, producer, for bringing that up. If you want to call now during the show, we are going to give away some NASCAR tickets. When NASCAR comes to COTA, if the freeze ever goes away, we're going to give away some tickets. But now we're going to go right in with Jake Bonilla because he is a Formula 4 in the US F4 Series racer, and he's from right down the road a piece in San Antonio, Jake, welcome to Speed City. Thank you for having me. How y'all guys doing? Good. We're good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's cold outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even Jake, in San Antonio. I, yes, sir. Jake, I tried to meet you last week, and I made the, the fatal error. Because I, I saw you last year at one of the races, and I was like, oh, I, it, there's the on the timing sheet. I was like, Texas, great, perfect. I'll go and introduce myself. And then I was stuck in the booth blah, 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 you'd gone. So last weekend when you came to Coda, I did run down. I talked to a few other guys, Hunter Yaney and a few others. I went down to your pit and your car was being packed up. And I said, where's Jake? And he said, he just left. He just left five minutes ago. I was like, ah, so finally I said, right, let's get him on the show. That's how I'll meet him. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be here. How was last weekend? Because you had some great weather, uh, a lot of testing and a great chance to get out there. It was a very big field, but it was an SCCA event, so no pressure. Uh, and I know you've raced at Coda before, but how was um, getting back in the car and, and so on? It was really good. It felt really good to get back in the car. I mean, it's been a while um, since I did some testing and to be back on my home track. It was, it was really great to get back in the field and get ready for the um, season coming up. Um, and yeah, the weather was absolutely perfect. And even though it was just an SCCA event, we still went out there and tried to win. So it was really good. Hey, Jake. So how did you get here? How did you end <laughs> up in a Formula race car? And, you know, what, what was your passion to do this or how did it happen? So ever since I was little, I've always loved racing. Um, but I'm like the first generation in my family to like ever get into racing. We didn't really know how to do it. Um, but I started working at a go-kart track when I was 15 because my dad told me how to get a job. And so <laughs> I had a local track that was near me, so I went and applied for a job there. So I just started, like, I started racing go-karts there, and I was doing actually pretty well, like, putting in, like, pretty good times. And then um, I asked my dad if I could go and um, see if I could get my competition license uh, for the SCCA. And um, I ended up going and doing the Bertle Roos School. And that um, made me eligible to get my competition license for the SCCA. So that's kind of how I started. And I did a little bit of a uh, spec me auto racing. And then I fortunately got the chance to do um, some testing with the F4 team with um, Eric Jensen uh, with um, oh, yeah. So that's where I pretty much started. And like, for not having as much experience as everybody else, um, I got in the car and I was pretty in some pretty good times in the F4 car. So we ended up doing the um, season last year with them. That was really hey, great. I got to ask, uh, where was that kart track? Where were you? Um, the kart track, it's called Alamo Go-Karts. It's here in San Antonio, like a little bit closer to Bernie. Um, they shut down, unfortunately, but that's kind of where it all started. Yeah, I know there's a track outside New Braunfels, it's a little ways between Austin and San Antonio. A lot of the uh, local crowd gets their feet wet with carts there. Well, yes, I think so. that's fantastic. I mean, that uh, that you saw it early enough in yourself and you, and you got out in the carts. I, I, that's great. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's, I've been, I've probably been racing for about a year and a half now. So I'm still pretty new to it. Um, so there's still a bunch of stuff that I can work on, but I'll just progress over time. And I feel like we'll be able to maybe win the championship this year and get a lot of really good points and maybe some podium finishes. Hey, Jake, what? 
Well, let me go, Jonathan, real quick. What about, uh, are you sitting in a SIM chair? What kind, of, what kind of rig do you have there at the house? So, so um, I'm actually in the process of moving houses. So my simulator is actually at my old house. We haven't gotten the chance to move it over here. But this is just one of my like, like little racing chairs that I just have just to kind of sit on just in my room. Um, but yeah, uh, we had Nemesis Labs. Uh, they built us a simulator and they're actually one of our sponsorships. They've helped us out a little bit. And um, they built us an awesome sim. So that's what I've been using to practice on tracks that I haven't been able to get out to. Um, Where are I, they based? Um, I think they're based in Alabama. Huh. Yes, sir. So actually, one of the guys um, flew down to come and build a simulator at my house. So oh, awesome. wow. Nice. Yeah, all about it. And um, just kind of get me introduced into the like kind of esports side of racing. Jake, can you believe, I mean, you, you're on this quest now and you, you're, you're, you're earning FIA points if you can get into the, you know, if you can start scoring some big points, but you've already raced at the Circuit of the Americas. But can you believe that you have this track this close to home? I mean, oh, yes. the only one in America? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, every single time I get on it, it's crazy to me because, I mean, I've been watching the F1 drivers race on Coda since I was little. and Was that your first race? What was that? Was that the first race you ever went to? Um, that was. That was the first Formula One race that I ever went to was in Coda. And it was absolutely amazing. And every single time I get on the track, it's just like, wow, like I'm racing on the Circuit of Americas. I mean, that's a Formula One track. All of the best have been there. Well, it's we've been there from the start. And we've been waiting to hear that exact sentence from a <laughs> young driver. And finally, I can see John smiling because we said it right at the start. We started off uh, Speed City where in 2012. And we said, we need a young Texas kid to just go to Coda, go, oh, I got to do this. And then bankrupt his dad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he was a little he was a little worried when I told him about car racing. I mean, <laughs> yeah. What about swimming or tennis or yeah. golf? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I played I played all those sports before, but it's that's just racing is what really was my passion, and that's what we ended up going with. So, thank I'm very fortunate that they gave me the opportunity to be able to do that. Hey, Jake. So, are you are you pretty athletic? Other, you know, because people don't think of race drivers necessarily as athletic. We know better. We know that they have to be. But are you pretty athletic outside? You know, in other in those other sports? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, um, I have to go to the gym every now and then because I mean, we're in the races for twenty five to thirty minutes, and we're pushing very, very hard. So it does get tiring. And a lot of people think it's just driving a car, but it gets it gets pretty tiring every now and then. Especially once you're pushing at your max and it's a hundred degrees every now and then here in Texas. So like it gets the, it's, it, it gets pretty, I don't know how you could say it. It's just very, it works down your body. Yeah, I'm sure. We're looking at onboard footage of you at Coda here and it's a very, uh, demanding track uh but you you really can see from an onboard just how much you're moving the wheel and how much the car's moving underneath you and how much you're reacting uh to to that movement and um yeah i i really don't think there's enough credit given to just how athletic you have to be and how demanding it is on your heart and your breathing uh and your neck muscles with the heavy braking and so on and so forth yes yeah, sir yeah it, there's a there's a lot that goes into that a lot of people really don't see um, and especially Coda, since it's a long track, I mean, we only usually we get like 12 to like 13 laps around Coda, but since it's a three mile track, like there's always, there's always <laughs> something you have to be looking for, like reflexes. It's all about pretty much how your fitness is and being able to stay all the way to the end of a 30 minute race and still be at your prime. Hey, uh, Jake, I want to ask you, we were just talking about before you came on, we were talking about uh formula one we were talking about a subject that the the power units they've come out with a new initiative and they're wanting the power units to be more exciting more emotional because we've got this v6 turbo hybrid which just when you say that out loud doesn't sound exciting and much less when you actually hear it in person but what do you think about that we were talking about some ideas like okay if you're going to have to have a, a hybrid make it a v12 or make it a v10 or something or what what do you got what, what's your ideas i definitely love the sound of the older Formula One cars with like the V8s and the V10s. Um, so I would honestly prefer for them to go back to that because I mean, like y'all said earlier, like 14,000 to 18,000 like rev limits, like it's, it's crazy. I mean, the engines would scream. Um, 
I like, I sort of like V6s in turbo, but it doesn't have the same, like, like speed wise, like they're pretty quick, but it doesn't have like the same effect as hearing like a V8 or a V10 just screaming. I mean, that's one of the best things ever. You got to have sound. <laughs> All right. So who is, who's your favorites in Formula One? Do you have a team or a driver that you follow? Um, Renault is my favorite team and um, um, Nico Hulkenberg. He's actually one of my favorite drivers because I've been following ever since like he's kind of like started or like he's, he's been one of my favorite like favorite drivers for a while now. Um, I just like the way that he acts, the way that he drives. I just don't think that he's gotten the, the shot that he deserves. So I'm hoping that at some point in time he'll get a drive, um, another driver with Formula One at some point. Well, I, I wanted to make sure that Gunter was on this show because I want to put you two together and see if you can bang heads uh, <laughs> and we, we can get you in that car quicker than, you know, get you back to Coda in, in, a, in an Haas F1 car uh, with, a, with, a, with a, a, be a better Ferrari engine. So what, how many years do you need before you get to one? Maybe, maybe three years? Yeah, around. I mean, I'm just, I'm taking it. I wouldn't say I'm taking it slow. It's just I'm learning everything that I can so that once I do get in like a high like horsepower car, like if, whether it's like an Indy Lights car or a USF 2000 car one of the, or an F3 car, um, that I'll know everything that I have to know about that so that I can drive it to its maximum. F4 is a really good place to start because it teaches you pretty much everything about cars and like how to like how to like correct steering and knowing about like the tire pressure that you need to go out on just based on weather. Um, it is just all of the science behind racing. That's what it's teaching you. So it's a really great series to be running in. Hey, uh, I want to ask you a question. We're, we're getting close to running out of time, but I want to ask you a question that we started asking every race driver who's ever been on the show, starting back with Alexander, Rossi. Alexander Rossi and oh, Connor Daly. Please have back a better in, answer than Alexander. Yeah. Uh, we want to ask you, what's your, what's your daily driver? What do you drive every day? Is it something fun? Please say it's something fun. Okay, so I have a 95 Miata. Okay. That's kind of like my project car. And then I have a Lexus RC350. But uh, I'm really, in, I love um, building cars. I actually work at a ra uh, my brother in law's wrap shop vehicle at Texas. So we customize a lot of vehicles. And um, so I have it on airbag suspension. So like it can lower and lift whenever I need it to. And that's just kind of like my, like my daily. And then the Miata is the car that I go and throw around every now and then. I wanted to go today since it's a little icy, but <laughs> my idea got shot down as soon as I told my dad about it. He's like, there's no way that that's happening. So yeah, what'd you do to the Miata? What was that? What'd you do to the Miata? Um, so I haven't done much yet. It's, it's swapped with a 1.8 liter out of a 2002 Miata. It used to be the 1.6 and the person that we bought it from before, um, they had it turboed, but they blew the engine. So before we bought it, they ended up swapping it with the 1.8, but they're just, I have plans in the future of turboing and getting a little bit more power out of it. <laughs> How about a Speed City Miata Day at Harris Hill between the four of us? <laughs> that sounds awesome. I'd love it. <laughs> we'll meet you there. And we'll both beat Jonathan. Oh, yeah, for sure. That would be awesome. Jake, hey, Jake, I'll be doing the commentary on your your season this year. So I'll be with you most of the year. So I'll keep I'll keep Speed City up to date with what you're doing. But why don't you tell the audience some of your social and also where you're looking forward to racing and how they can see you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure the F4 season is going to be live streamed this year. Yes, it is. I'm, not, I'm not completely sure with, um, what broadcast it's going to be. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to live, we're going to broadcast it both on the app and on, um, you know, okay. on the websites as well as, uh, probably Google and YouTube and so on. So it's okay, going to have some big, um, big following. Okay. Perfect. Um, so yeah, my social medias are Jake underscore Bonilla at, on Instagram. Um, and then it's Jake Bonilla just on Facebook. Um, those are usually the two sites that I use mostly um, to kind of follow my racing career. Um, other than that, I think that's it for social media. What's the well, ambition? Jake, what's the ambition? What, what, do, you, what do you mean? Like, where do you want to be when you when you where do you want to be when you when you when you grow up as as old as us and uh, you're still <laughs> you're still 18? No, I mean really, where, where do you want to be? A lot of people, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but where would you be in five years if you had if if everything goes well? If everything goes well, I want to get into IndyCar. I think that's the goal because it's a U.S. based series and the IndyCars are just awesome, especially with all of, like the new like technology or technology that's going into those cars. I think that that series is really going to become more popular 
in a few years. So either that, that's the ending goal. And I also really love GT racing and like LMP racing. So that's also um, a path that I might take at some point in time, just depending on how everything goes. Jake Bonilla, thank you very much for coming on. Best of luck. And we'll be tracking you from uh, down there in San Antonio. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks awesome. for coming on. Take care, Jake. Thanks, Jake. See you next week. Later, guys. All right. Hey, before we go, I'm going to check with the producer and see, do we still have our caller? We had a caller call in. And yes, we do have a caller on the line. Let's bring him on the line because we give out the number. And uh, go ahead, caller. Hold on one second. Producer's telling me. I, I did a false start on him. He started to go to break. But I'm going to bring this. All right. Do we have a caller on the line? Yes, sir. Hey, what's your name and what are you driving? Jonathan Rodriguez, and I uh, currently drive a 30th anniversary Camaro. Hey, there we go. Nice, classic too. I'm Excellent. Just glad, glad you didn't say a, a, a like a a, a Prius or something. Anyway, so <laughs> no. uh, are you ready to go to the NASCAR race at Coda? First time ever. Yes, yes. I got a son who's a car nut like I am, so uh, we're excited and we're ready. Yes, sir. Who's your NASCAR guy? Um, God, I don't know. It's been, um, it's been a while. I like, uh, Earnhardt, um, uh, or Trillix. Uh, awesome. Well, great. Yeah, well, that's plenty. <laughs> well, look, stay on the line and we will get your info and we will get you those tickets. We'll get you a well, pair you of tickets. Told him he's, won, he's won the tickets. He's gone yeah. for free. You oh, won. Awesome. You've done it. Yeah, awesome. you've won. Sure. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, hang hang on the line and we'll get the, your info from you. All right, we got to take a break. We've got another guest coming up right after this. You're listening to Speed City. We'll be back after these messages. Battle USA is back at Circuit of the Americas, March 6th and 7th. It's the ultimate time attack challenge where top drivers compete for the fastest lap times in fully tuned track built cars featuring the Grid Life Touring Cup, Lone Star Trap Ride Alongs, Food Trucks, a Just Vibes Car Show, and more. Plus, the Life Motorsports Nissan GTR is back to defend its time of 207 181. It's a whole weekend of family fun. Tickets are $10 online, $20 at the box office. Find out more at superlapbattleusa.com. Motivation USA, catering to the sport bike enthusiast looking for truly unique parts and accessories. Stand out from the crowd. Motivation is the exclusive North American distributor for SC Project MotoGP inspired exhausts and the largest Rizoma retailer in the United States. Get the best parts from around the world at the best prices with fast shipping and a knowledgeable staff ready to help. Shop online 24-7 at MotivationUSA.com. That's MotivationUSA.com. Talk 1370, the right choice. My name is Christina Nelson, and this is Speed City. Welcome back to the fastest hour in radio, Speed City. All right, welcome back to the show. Our next guest is a very interesting guest. Never had anybody like this on the show before. And he is a fitness and mental strength coach. And he's works, he works with athletes in all side, uh, professions and soccer and, every, and, and now he's into motorsports. And I thought it was a really interesting time because there's been so much discussion about mental health, everything from COVID to everything else. It's just kind of a, it's kind of come into its own. It seems like more and more. It's no longer stigmatized like it was. Are and we it, paying him for this session? <laughs> <laughs> we should be paying him, and well, we, we should all probably three of us need some help. He might have to be on longer than we think. He we may have, have his limits. I don't know. <laughs> we may have to keep him on after the show. But we want to welcome Santiago Calderon to the show. Santiago, welcome to Speed City. Thank you all for having me. I'm glad to be here. And uh, the first 10 minutes is free. Is free after that. Oh, okay. I've, I've been listening to you guys, and I think I would have charged like three times what I usually charge. <laughs> Diago, I just want to be a racing driver. That's all I ever wanted, and now I have to talk about it. <laughs> Basically, right. <laughs> uh, well, Santiago, tell us about your background and how you got started. So my background, I'm... Um, 
I started as physical therapy. I wanted to be a physical therapist. Uh, I'm a soccer player from before I was born, born and raised in Mexico. So I've had that in my blood the whole time and just kept getting injured. So after high school, I wanted to help others. And when I actually started my junior year of college at Arizona State, I took a sports psychology course and it blew my mind. It was like, well, literally, pun intended. <laughs> yeah. um, and my professor talked about the mental side of uh, rehabilitation, not just the physical side. And that just sent me down this massive hole, uh, like rabbit hole and eventually got my master's in sport and exercise psychology. And I wrote my thesis on the injured athlete. But when I was doing that uh, master's, I got to go to a few races in Europe. Um, I was in Le Mans, I was at Silverstone and Spa and started noticing all the different, um, how crazy some of you uh, <laughs> race car drivers are in, in a good way and a bad way, how, how much they have to be there mentally. And been back in Austin for five years, working with athletes of all sorts of uh, levels, ages and sports. And last year I started uh, working with the auto sports and it, again, it blew my mind again, because in another sport you do, you lose concentration, you drop, you drop the ball or you miss mm. a tackle or you, you, you know, you miss, uh, yeah, like you slide away. But in, um, in auto sports, if you lose focus, it, it can be the, that could be the end. Right. So mm. it was just so big of uh, the focus and the confidence, but also the, the modesty that there's in, um, in race cars because you have to be modest because it's not just you you have to worry about you have to worry about all the the other cars around you too mm -hmm. so it's been super interesting i've been, i've enjoyed it so much what is something that you find unique about the drivers i mean we know the physical aspects smacking a wall taking another car out driver what is something unique that really is something that maybe us layman's or the guys behind the microphones don't cope with or don't deal with or, or don't understand yet there's a couple of things I've noticed. Uh, one of the biggest one has to do with fear uh, and the respect to that fear, but also the how they come, they grab onto that fear. Uh, and and that fear comes from hitting or getting in an accident, or from the pressure that comes with being a race car driver. Not just from the team, not just from the sponsors, but from your family members, from your friends, uh, even from your peers. I know there's as um, respectful as some of these drivers are, there is a lot of things that happen uh, mentally between them that just can create that kind of fear of, am I going to, am I fit? Do I fit in here correctly? Or is he going to take me out? Cause I said something that I shouldn't have said. Um, so it, it's, it is very, there's, it is very holistic. There's a lot of things. Um, but yeah, fear, I, like I, I keep coming back to that because yeah, it's, you're so close to, to the wall. You're, you're so, you're also using it to power you as well. Yeah. And go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah. I mean, that was one, I, I'm fascinated by what you do and it's one of my fascinations while John and uh, Les definitely are into the mechanical side of it. I'm very much into the human side of it as a sportsman myself growing up. Um, but what I'm amazed at, um, racing athletes is you know they won't go on a roller coaster they won't let you drive a hire car a rent a car they want to be in control and that's where that fear is based as long as their hands are on the wheel and i do find myself in that situation i will take risks on my own but i don't want those risks to be at the mercy of somebody else's decision and i can race i can race and, and be on a track with a bunch of other people that i don't know because i'm in control of what I, my destiny and i've i've been profoundly kind of um interested by that side of it hey santiago we've just got a little bit of time left uh so i want to make sure we get all your information out there but, but, but so we want to talk about your website and all that but i want to before we go i want to talk about remember when roman grosjean admitted to i say admitted it's funny that you say it that way but he he talked about using a psychologist and all sorts of mental coaches to help his career and i think that when he said that i'm, I'm certain a lot more race drivers admitted and talked about, brought it out into the open. So, uh, but Santiago, we're really out of time. What about your website and what's, uh, what's the best way to reach out to you? Uh, my website's camowave.com. You can uh, search for me uh, at, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook uh, at camowave. 
I'm current for my auto sports uh, work. I am working with Speed Group uh, USA, which is uh, the uh, the all around. Uh, you go for them for whatever needs you need for uh, for auto sports. Yeah, they're are they awesome. I know your brother uh, Tony over there. So, <laughs> all right, Santiago, thank you so much for coming on, and we'll, uh, we'll we'll I'm sure we'll talk to you some more and get your insights because it's really fascinating stuff. Yeah. And we'll ch check out your website. Yeah, I'd love to come back anytime you guys want me. I'm, uh, I'm here in Austin, and especially Definitely. frozen right now. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I, I want to dig deeper into that because there's a lot. Uh, I want to go back over that Grosjean show and all sorts. All right. Well, thanks, Santiago. Yeah, thank you all. Have a good one. Thank all you. right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We really appreciate it. And good luck with the weather, everyone. And, of course, next Sunday night, your Sunday night with Speed City, we will be back then. Talk to you soon. Ciao, Happy trails.